Hello everyone and welcome to the third session of Microtech Canada's Microtech Hardware series. In this video, picking up where we left off, we're going to talk about two standalone Microtech Ethernet routers, both of which have proven themselves as two of Microtech's reliable Ethernet routers with traffic encryption capabilities. They are the RB3011 UIAS-RM and the RB4011 IGS Plus RM priced at $179 and $199 US dollars. The RB3011 and RB4011 Ethernet routers are two other devices whose names and product codes do not follow Microtech naming rules. These two devices can somehow be considered as two upgraded versions of the RB2011 family. Similar to our previous reviews, for the RB3011, the capital U in the product code indicates the existence of a USB port, and the small i refers to the item's single port power injector without controller. The capital A shows greater memory, and the capital S shows the availability of an SFP port. Also, as previously mentioned, the letters RM at the end show that the device comes with a rack mount enclosure. As for the RB4011, we have the capital G in the product code that shows the item's gigabit capacity, as well as the characters S plus that tell us that this device has an SFB plus port. In terms of appearance, both devices have their SFB ports on the front, whereas the RB3011 also comes with an LCD and a USB port. In terms of device specifications, we mentioned that the RB3011 and RB4011 can be regarded as upgrades to the RB2011 family, and we can compare these two devices with the RB2011 UIAS-RM for a better understanding. As you can see, all 10 Ethernet ports on the RB3011 and RB4011 are gigabit ports, and the CPU architecture of both devices have been upgraded to the more advanced 32-bit ARM architecture. The RB3011 comes with a dual-core CPU, whereas the RB4011 enjoys a quad-core capacity. Moreover, both devices have a 1.4 GHz CPU frequency. The input voltage on the RB3011 has been upgraded to the 1030 range, and the RB4011 uses the greater 1257 input voltage range. The dimensions of the RB3011 is equal to those of the RB2011. However, the RB4011 comes in a smaller size compared to the other two devices. All three devices have passive fan counts, an IP20 international protection code, and a mean time between failure of 200,000 hours at 25 degrees Celsius. The maximum USB current of the RB3011 is 1 ampere lower than the RB2011, and with the absence of a USB port, this value is 0 for the RB4011 Ethernet router. Also, you can see that the maximum out per port output within the 18 to 30 volt range is 600 milliamperes for the two upgraded devices, while the RB4011 also gives a 420 milliampere maximum out within the 30 to 57 volt range. The two RB3011 and 4011 routers, however, have a higher level of power consumption, which is indeed acceptable given their high performance rates, CPU speeds, and RAM sizes. Further down the table, we can see that the RB4011, given its smaller size, has relinquished the USB port of the other two devices. Moreover, all three routers have a passive PoE in, but within different voltage ranges, and the RB4011 provides a passive PoE out up to 57 volts. Concerning SFP ports, the RB3011 and RB4011 do not have SFP DDMI. However, unlike the other two, the RB4011 has an SFP Plus port. You can see that the RB3011 and RB4011 routers have a RAM size of 1 GB, with the latter enjoying a greater storage capacity as well. And finally, we have the tested ambient temperature of the three devices, which shows that all three items are capable of operating in both hot and cold harsh conditions, 
with the RB4011 showing the greatest level of resilience. To have a better grasp of how the CPU of each device works and how the traffic is distributed in each router, we recommend that you take a look at each product's block diagram. For the RB3011, you can see that both CPUs support all 10 Ethernet ports and the SFB port is only connected to CPU1. Therefore, in case you want to connect the SFB port to the service provider, one recommendation is to keep your local network on ports 1 to 5 and use ports 6 to 10 in a bridge mode so that firewall configurations and other similar settings do not affect the ongoing traffic on the SFB port. But in case you're not going to use the SFB port, another solution is to use ports 1 to 5 for active service providers for operations such as failover, firewall, or load balancing, and use port 6 to 10 for your local network while connecting the SFB port to your fiber switch as an uplink. As for the RB4011, you have one quad-core CPU which supports all 10 gigabit ports as well as the SFB Plus port, and the traffic distribution is equal on all four CPU cores. Also, for all hardware and items that have SFB ports, we recommend that you take a look at the SFB compatibility list in which you can find all the details of compatibility between Microtech products with various SFB modules. As for the test results of these two routers, it is worth mentioning again that all throughputs are determined based on packet sizes, usage modes, and device configurations. Moreover, the values you see in this table are not for each single Ethernet port, but the total throughput among all active ports on your device. If you compare the speed tests of the RB3011 with those of the RB4011, you can see that for the same packet sizes and configurations, the RB4011 is providing twice the throughput of the RB3011. However, apart from Ethernet test results of these two devices, one of the most important advantages of the RB3011 and 4011 is their hardware encryption feature and their IPsec test results, which is given again based on different modes and configurations. Here, with the addition of an extra IPsec configuration, the RB4011 is again showing a much higher performance. And therefore, we once again come to the very important issue of asking vital questions when planning a network and purchasing our products, starting with the usage type. Are we going to use our network for anything other than web surfing or checking emails? How many active users will we have on the network? What are the possible sizes and numbers of transmitted packets? What service are we receiving from our ISP? And finally, what type of traffic are we looking at? Will it be necessarily encrypted or not? As for the industries that can benefit from the RB3011 and RB4011 Ethernet routers, we can refer to the education industry, especially universities and college campuses. Managed IT service providers, ISPs and wireless ISPs, as well as VoIP service providers with less than 600 active users can also put these devices to good use. System integrators and manufacturers comprise another industry that can benefit from these two routers given their high performance levels. Similarly, hotels, the healthcare industry, and surveillance systems that are required to have quality, rapid, round-the-clock operations will also find these devices useful. In terms of networking solutions, these two devices can fulfill almost any project needs. More specifically, however, they are suitable for establishing VPN connections since they have the ability of encrypting the ongoing traffic. Therefore, they are very suitable for creating centralized VPNs, site-to-site -site VPNs, and internet hotspots. Given their suitable performance, you can also use these two devices as a wireless controller as well as for content filtering and establishing firewall configurations. The same applies to network monitoring and dynamic routing protocols as a result of the CPU performance of these devices, especially that of the RB4011. However, 
we should bear in mind that these devices are quite powerful and therefore a little more expensive than the Ethernet routers we have covered so far. As a result, using them in certain small projects such as training classes, for example, can be an overkill, where you will be using a powerful device for small tasks. Thank you everyone for joining us on the third session of Microthick Hardware Series. We hope you have enjoyed our tutorials so far and have found them useful. In case you have any suggestions for the future, please leave us a comment. We highly appreciate any feedback to improve our content. Until the next video of this series in which we will be reviewing the two RB1100 Ethernet routers, take good care of yourself and goodbye.